see how awesome that is. That's sick. And we scroll up and we've got the Optane just chilling up there. Oh guys, exciting day. New computer's here. Oh, let's go get it. Back up, back up. Signature, no nothing, just drop it off, right? Yep. Holy crap guys, new computer. Let's go take it inside. Hello folks and welcome to Net Cruiser Tech. Today's a special day because we got a new computer in the mail today, just dropped off. I found it on Amazon Warehouse used as a used return for half price of the components that are in this. So let's take a look in the box. I mean, I know what it's supposed to be, but the manufacturer of this PC uses kind of different components for every build. So you don't know what kind of motherboard you're gonna get. So I'm gonna, I know what CPU it has, and I know what video card it has, but I don't know the brands of the components. Is it not even, it's not even in its retail box anymore. Nondescript black box. We got, oh, it looks like it is an ASRock motherboard. This will give you a hint on what it is. ASRock Z370 Pro 4. Yeah. You probably don't know this, but I used to build PCs back in the early 2000s, and I used to love AS Rock. AS Rock was a great brand, and uh, they've always been very good value for performance. You also get a gaming keyboard. Okay. Here we go. I have not had a tower PC in a long time. Since approximately 2006 was the last time that I had an actual desktop PC tower. All right, I had to do a quick battery swap because this, this mirrorless camera chews through batteries and they're old. Anyway, I am super stoked by this. It looks brand friggin' new. Like, it still has all the, well, I'll take the outer plastic off. We'll get that outer plastic off, but check this out. It still has all the protective plastic on it. Like, it's supposed to be used as a return. It looks brand spanking new. And even in the accessories kit, all everything's sealed. So someone bought this and then decided that they didn't get a good deal on it and they returned it. So it must have had shipping damage because the reason why I got such a good deal on this, and speaking of that, I got this whole computer for $650 US, $870 Canadian. And it has a Coffee Lake Core i5 8600K. It has a Radeon RX 480, 8 gig of RAM, 1 terabyte hard drive, 16 gigabyte Optane speed booster, and a bunch of other unique things. Things like even the case. Look at the front panel I.O. of the case. It has HDMI on the front panel. So you know what that means. VR ready. And that's exactly why I bought this is because by now you would have maybe if you watch my channel you would have seen that I have the Lenovo VR headset, the Windows Mixed Reality headset. And I made a video of how does it run in minimum specs on a laptop. So with this, now I will be able to run ultra premium games. And that's what I got this for. This is going to become more, mostly a gaming rig. I'm still going to edit on Mac. But this is just going to be a gaming PC and general purpose PC. All right, so we're going to get this panel off. It is real glass. It's not acrylic. So that's good. You got to be careful. And it's got a black border surround so it hides fingerprints and cables. I really like that. That's a good design feature already. One thing I don't know is who makes this case. This is a completely unknown case to me. Anyway, I'm going to carefully pull out this packing material. And we're finally going to get our first look at the components. Okay. Ooh, that is a nice big card. And it's an aftermarket cooler. They said that it had an Intel box stock cooler. It doesn't. It already has an aftermarket cooling in it. So it's got a Cooler Master CPU cooler. Let me get some additional light on the situation. Intel Gigabit Ethernet, ELAN audio. It is a ASRock Z370 Pro. The GPU looks to be maybe an MSI. I'm gonna have to pull out the GPU and take a look. Some case fans with red rings. The whole case has RGB lighting, which, where's the, oh, there's the RGB strip right here. We've got a Wi-Fi module card. It's got a nice basement. At this point, I can't really tell the make of the PSU, so I'll have to get in there and take a look at that. Here's the back panel I.O. It comes with a legit Windows Home license. Here's the back panel. It's even got USB Type-C. 
So we've got USB 3.1 type C on board. Interesting that there's these Wi-Fi holes here that are open, even though we've got a Wi-Fi card here. And then down here, we've got a Western Digital Blue hard drive, one terabyte. The only thing that's a little bit of a downside with this rig is that it runs one stick of RAM out of the box, one eight gig DDR4. I'll likely pick up another stick just so I can run it in dual channel mode. Something else that's interesting about this is this, this HDMI cable here, and it will go up here to this top HDMI because it has HDMI on the top panel. Also, these light up too. Something else I was curious about was I just wanted to look at how the cable management was on the on the dark side, on the back side. So turn this off, let's see how the cable management is. Wow man, cable management is good. You know, they say don't buy pre-builts. Come on now. I cannot build a system this nice for, for 650 bucks. Not even close. With all the wiring done, it's got a nice big back plate on it already. That's already done with a nice big cutout in this case for aftermarket cooling. Got some SSD trays here. This is a really nice case. I was, when I bought this, I was unsure about the case because it is kind of weird where you'll see it later when all this is lit up, this has like a design to it. And we're going to take a look at that, but I still have no idea who makes this case. There's no branding on it whatsoever. I have no idea who makes this chassis, but I'm liking it so far. The power supply is not modular and not labeled. So without taking it out, I have no idea, but it's supposed to be a 500 and some watt power supply. All right, I just set it down here, just laid it down. It does have uh, mesh filters on front and back of the bottom, which is nice. And I don't know what's behind the front panel if there's mesh here, but then we've got the basement. The video card is an MSI. It's an MSI RX 580 gig. We've got the AS Rock. Z370 Pro 4, so this is a Coffee Lake 8th gen board. Also will support the new 9th gen CPUs when those come out. We've got an aftermarket Wi-Fi module, which I'm not sure what brand of Wi-Fi card is, but who cares. And we scroll up and we've got the Optane just chilling up there. I'm curious to see what the performance of this is gonna be like, because this is supposed to turn your normal hard drive into the performance of an SSD. So we're gonna see what that's like. Right on, sweet. This is a cool computer. One thing I see right away I might want to change is maybe the placement of the RGB because that is going to be highly visible, blaring right in your face, right through the tempered glass area. So I might peel that up and then stick it either up top in this channel here or down here in the basement side because the tempered glass panel has the nice black border. So you're not, they had a way to hide it. They just chose not to. But we should definitely do the peel, right? We gotta do the peel. Oh, satisfying. Look, you can sort of see how it's going to light up through the panel. And is it acrylic? Yeah, that's acrylic. So that is going to get scratched up over time, but just try and be careful with it. Nice. I'm going to leave the, this film on the glass until, until we're ready to finally like set it up in its proper home. All right, are you ready for the first power on. I'm using the top HDMI plugged into my monitor. I've got this wireless all-in-one like media style keyboard connected so it's powered on for the first time. And see if we post. Whoa, Whoa cool look at the colors man. Wow, Whoa, sounds like we've got a noisy fan but Whoa, there's a seizure waiting to happen. I'm gonna have to see how to program that RGB strip. Whoa. Whoa. Looks like it's even booting in the windows. Wow, it's booting in the windows. I didn't even get a chance to check the BIOS. Anyway, this has this white is to cycle the colors. So you can go blue, white, red pulse. I think this cycles through all the colors. This is a cool case. Oh, that looks sick. So yeah, I think, uh, as cliche as it is, I think we're gonna go with an RGB style build for this because look at how RGB it is already. So we're just gonna go balls to the wall RGB. We're gonna make it even more bright than it is now. Look at how awesome that is, that's sick. I am super excited for this. $650, are you kidding? It was just luck. You know, I just spotted it on the warehouse as a basically an open box return. Purple. 
orange or yellow white. I like the pulse. The pulsing is cool. All right, so we got a noisy fan. I don't like the the blinking. Anyway, we're just gonna let that finish its first power on, and then we'll do a quick little window setup and then check the BIOS. PC has been running great so far. It's uh, it does have one little noisy fan, and I figured out that the RGB strip has a remote control. So I was playing around. I got it just cycling red. So I've got everything on red right now, which looks pretty cool to me. And we're just in the middle of doing. Windows install. So I haven't even still got into the BIOS yet to see what we're clocked at, what the RAM's running at or anything. We've got a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz on the i5-8600K, uh, ASRock motherboard. Anyway, we've got eight gigs of RAM and looks like there's no specific drivers been installed. It's a fairly bare bones version of Windows. I don't see any major bloatware except for it's, it does have a ton of recommended apps going on. Um, but in here, what do we got? looks like it's all fairly, fairly clean. It's all games. It's just some preloaded games. So there's no drivers. There's no, thankfully there's no like Norton antivirus or any garbage like that chugging down the system that I got to clear out. So mostly I just need to get installing drivers because this would be extremely unoptimized. This is just a bare basic install of Windows 10 Home. And uh, yeah, so now I got to get all the drivers installed. All right, so as mentioned, Windows is bare bones, so I'm just in the middle of basically installing all the drivers now. I've got the MSI Afterburner install in progress, which needs DirectX SDK for some reason from 2006 and 7. And then down here, I'm installing all the drivers for the motherboard. So I've got all those in progress, and I'll be installing drivers for probably a full day. Uh, and updates and stuff before I'm finally ready to actually put a game on. I've been unsure of is if Optane is actually activated yet or not. So I am installing the, the one click install setup driver right now for Optane because I can't figure out how to tell if it's actually running. And MSI Afterburner is running, although I'm unfamiliar with this too. I don't know quite how to use it. Figure out how to dial up the overclock on the GPU later. It's running at a 1366 right now. We're going to do the restart in the UFI. I just installed the application that does that, so I shouldn't have to press any keys. And on reboot, it should knock me into the BIOS. There it is. E1.10. We got 2133 memory. Oh, yeah, I can click into the memory. JDEC 1 is 2133. So it's running pretty... I mean, that's okay, but this is like base memory. DRAM tweaker. XMP, so I should be able to do XMP profile too, but I don't know what I'm going to be able to get out of this RAM. Raid mode enabled. Why? Why would raid mode be enabled? All right, I'm unfamiliar with how to do anything in this BIOS. I'm going to have to check it out. Here's all your temps here. Looks like a pretty fancy looking BIOS though. Isn't good though. We're like idling at 90 degrees C on CPU. Motherboard is at 35, but the, the CPU temperature is really, really hot. So we got to figure out how to fix that. I did buy an aftermarket cooler, but I haven't even started an overclock yet and we're chilling at 90 degrees C, that's way too hot. All right, so out of the box, Intel Optane is definitely not installed because I've been booting this up for a couple of minutes now and I've still got spinny spinny hard drive booting. Once I finally get back into Windows, I am going to run the utility, but this has been multiple minutes of waiting for it to boot. And uh, after Optane is enabled, it should boot up like an SSD. There, that probably took two to three minutes boot time. Windows protected your PC, run recognize app. Oh boy. Run anyway, it's friggin' Intel, please. Microsoft, stop being so paranoid. Optane memory installer, okay. This is directly from Intel. I tried downloading the driver from ASRock, but it was taking way too long. That's one downside to installing drivers from your motherboard manufacturer is usually it's like a terrible experience trying to download it for speed. Anyway, this is directly from Intel downloading Optane. Not downloading, installing Optane. You're almost there. Let's install it. Intel Optane is now enabled and accelerating your system. 16 gigabyte Optane chip boosting the Western Digital hard drive. Shut down. We're going to restart the PC. 
And this is with Optane now. We're gonna see how quickly does it reboot with Optane. I just have to worry about my monitor because it doesn't seem to detect it properly because I got dual inputs. We'll see if it comes back. It switched to DVID again. So we'll go to input two. We might already be back in Windows. I think it's booting now. Yeah. See, I can't watch it boot. Because it always wants to switch back to the DVID on the laptop. Anyway, that was like 20 seconds. We're already back. Right, here's something neat. I installed the ASRock utilities. So this is showing me that in Windows, my core temp is 52 degrees Celsius at kind of idle downloading stuff. Motherboard temperature 35. So I don't know why in the BIOS it was at 90 degrees C. And there's an app shop for the motherboard. So I can actually do my BIOS update and stuff right from Windows, which is much easier than trying to find it from the website. So I'm just gonna do some of these updates here and then we'll get the BIOS and drivers and stuff to the latest. Okay, folks, this is gonna wind down my first day with the CyberPower PC. And the biggest issue with it is just thermals. So I've had to take the side panel off and this Cooler Master aftermarket cooler is just not adequate. So I've been running Cinebench and you can see here on Cinebench thermal throttling. So I've been hitting thermal throttle as soon as you fire up Cinebench and I'm getting like 800 Cinebench score on CPU which is the equivalent of around an i7 4770K which is not bad but if I can take care of the thermals it'll probably get into the thousands. So that's the next step. And I had a feeling that that would be the case. So I actually went to the computer store and I got an upgraded cooler already. So this will be the next video, the Gamax GT. So that's it. Come along for the ride of my new gaming PC. All right guys, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to buy something, I always put links in my description. And as always, thanks for watching.